All right, so here's the target. This is, uh, that's where I sit in. It's like my little sniper nest. <laughs> it's about 40 feet away, 40, 35 feet roughly around there. And this is uh, me sighting it in. So I, I wasn't going for groups. I was always just aiming at the center. These were my sighting in shots. So the crosshairs are like this and like this. So I knew where to hold. And uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. I could mess around with it even more and you know shoot some more pellets through it. But I don't got a heck of a lot of pellets. So I'm, I'm happy with that hold. So I just got to know I got to hold off the target about that much. So right there and right there. And that's what I did for this target. And it seemed to hold true. Look at that. That's e my, my thumb is easily smaller than a squirrel head. Squirrel head's about that big. So at 40 feet, I'll take that. With my rifle sighted in and a couple of pellets in my pocket, I was ready for this squirrel hunt. Alright, I'm not even too far into the woods and look at that. There's some uh, pine cone shavings on the ground, so the squirrel's obviously been feeding here. So we're gonna we're gonna go a little further into the woods. Most of the time, squirrel hunting can be looked at as sort of a hobby, but this time was different. This time, I was hungry. Man, squirrels can be so quiet when they want to be. They're in their element out here too because they can move along these woods without making a sound. Not me though. He's over there. Let's go get him. I got crows circling around. They're hungry too. But I've been on this squirrel's ass for <laughs> so long. So if they were to take my kill, I would be so pissed. <laughs> right. Let's carry on and try and find this guy. So we chased him down into here. Now we're just looking for him. We've only heard him. We've not seen him. By this point, it was more than clear I wasn't the only one hunting this squirrel. Son of a gun. Okay, I heard him more off into that area. It could just be different squirrels. What if they, I just have a picture in my head that they're, they're just laughing at me. They're like, <laughs> they're like, let's leave this goof off into this area. No, let's lead them over here. Let's lead them over here. Lead them over. <laughs> they're, they're leading me further into the woods. By this point, I was I know becoming this desperate. Um, it became sort of like a tug of war. The crows wanted the squirrel just as much as I did. Whenever they would circle around, the squirrel would go quiet and would only make noise again once they left. But when he made noise, it was more than clear that he was further into the woods. Just crossed that area, that's the area I was in. That's where I was hearing those squirrel barks. And I decided to cross it, and now I'm into this woodland. Ooh, man, I hope I don't have to go any further than this. After only hearing the squirrel for the better part of 30 minutes, I finally spotted him, and I was more determined than ever to not walk home empty-handed. I raised my rifle up and steadied my crosshairs on the squirrel, but only to miss. This puts me into a little bit of a panic mode as the squirrel scurries off. Things can get rather serious when a man's stomach reads E for empty. Worried from that missed shot, I glanced the treetops and surrounding forests for any signs of this squirrel that I've been tracking. Thankfully though, I spot him. Spotting him gives me a temporary calm, but there is still a very real risk that I could miss this shot as well. Not wanting a repeat of the first shot that positioned myself well and control my trigger pull this time, leading to success. Down goes the Mr. Squirrel, 
thanks to my Phantom 22 air rifle. Beautiful. Could still be alive. Don't want him suffering. Although the movement that you are seeing now is the result from a full-on headshot. Oh no, he's dead. Direct shot. Out of respect for the squirrel. Just in case. I still go point blank and shoot him in the head. Just to make sure he's not suffering. There we go. Oh, fuck yeah. oh I'm not gonna be walking home empty handed. Fuck yeah. When you get through a successful hunt, there ain't no better feeling. I could hardly contain my excitement here. Just beautiful. Look at that. Right in the head. Just a beautiful squirrel. Big squirrel. Oh my god. It is such a relief to know I'm not going to be walking home empty handed and man, man oh man, <laughs> I had to go really far for this squirrel and to finally get him, I'm the happiest squirrel hunter on this planet right now. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we're just working our way back home. We went in about, oh I don't know, 500 feet into these woods, it started out just by my house. Which is pretty insane. Pretty insane the adventures you go on, even in small game hunting. You know, I didn't think I'd get this squirrel. I was becoming a little doubtful, but I always had in the back of my mind that I wasn't gonna give up. And, ooh, <laughs> just stepped in some mud. And it's that mindset that got me to where I am. And it's because of that that I'm walking out of these hoods, woods with a squirrel in my bag and not empty handed. So we're heading home, we're gonna skin the squirrel up and we're gonna cook him up tomorrow. But yeah, that was an awesome hunt and I'm so glad I was able to bring you guys along. Lac La Croix is situated very far from civilization. Nearest grocery store is about a two hour drive. Therefore, it makes it challenging if you start running low on certain foods. Unlike if you are in a city, you can just walk to the nearest store and come back with what you need in five minutes. Here is a four hour round trip. And that's if conditions are good. Although I wasn't completely out, I was running low. And the scroll will help me prolong my food supply. I walk out of these woods today from a successful hunt and with a little bit of meat to add to the freezer and for that I am thankful. <laughs>